of the diesel engine rightly begins with an early chapter in the history of fire. Long ago, the people of southeastern Asia made using an ingenious device called the fire piston or fire syringe. This consisted of a hollow tube closed at one end and a round stick that fitted snugly into the tube. Tinder was placed at the bottom of the round stick. Then when this stick or plunger was inserted into the tube and driven down quickly, the tinder took fire and burned. Let's see what happens inside this fire-making apparatus. As the round stick or plunger moves down the tube, the air in the tube is trapped, squeezed into a smaller and smaller space. Finally, the tinder at the end of the plunger ignites. To understand how this happens, let's construct a modern fire syringe. First, we turn the apparatus upside down. Then we put two thermometers in convenient places. One of these thermometers will record the temperature of the air inside the cylinder, and the other registers the room temperature. Next, we add an instrument for measuring the air pressure in the cylinder in pounds per square inch. With the piston in the down position, the pressure gauge on our apparatus reads zero, and both thermometers are at room temperature, 74 degrees. We start compressing the air. As the piston goes up, the pressure rises. The temperature outside the cylinder remains the same. But inside the cylinder, the more the air is compressed, the higher the temperature goes. Now the air in the cylinder is hot enough to boil water. Higher and higher go temperature and pressure. Now it's hot enough to melt tin. Until finally, the air is squeezed into about 1 16th of the space it occupied before we started compressing it. At this point, the pressure and the temperature of the air within the cylinder are both extremely high. So high that a mist of oil sprayed into it will take fire and burn. This shows us that highly compressed air gets hot enough to ignite fuel oil. This principle, called compression ignition, was first developed by Rudolf Diesel. Now let's examine another phenomenon. We stretch a piece of rubber sheeting over the mouth of a container and place the container over a flame. As the rubber sheeting puffs out like a balloon, we see that air or gas expands when it is heated. Now let's see how this principle applies to our apparatus. First, the air in the cylinder becomes hot from compression. Then the burning oil raises the temperature still higher. This additional heat causes the gases to expand, forcing the piston down. Now let's convert this apparatus into a mechanism which will apply these principles of compression ignition and expansion to provide usable power. First, we take away the pressure gauge and the thermometers and strengthen the walls of the cylinder to withstand continued high temperatures and pressures. We also need a couple of pipes or manifolds, one to bring fresh air into the cylinder, the other to carry the burned gases away, and two valves to seal the air in the cylinder while it is being compressed and while the oil is burning. Next, we install a better atomizer, which we shall call the fuel injection unit. Then, in order to transform the up and down motion of our piston into more convenient rotary motion, we change the piston rod to a connecting rod and add a crankshaft. And finally, to support our mechanism, we add a housing and a base. Now let's see how this engine works. First, the intake valve opens, and as the piston moves downward, fresh air is drawn into the cylinder. Next, the intake valve closes, tightly sealing the air in the cylinder as the piston moves upward on its compression stroke. The fuel injection unit sprays fuel into the highly compressed hot air. The oil burns, and temperature and pressure increase enormously 
driving the piston down. The exhaust valve opens, the piston moves up, and the gases resulting from combustion are forced out. This engine is called a four-stroke cycle diesel engine. One of every four strokes is a power stroke. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. These four strokes of the piston occur every two revolutions of the crankshaft. 